Wow. Yeah, I pressed the button. There we go. Live streams up. Okay, well, <laughs> first things first, I realize that not many people are on at the moment. I'm going to give it a few more minutes, so I am going to start soon talking about my Eagle Scout progress, also talking about tips in general, trying to see if I can answer any questions you guys have. So, I'm going to play my intro song because I actually have it up this time. Pretty sure you guys will be able to hear it too from my desktop audio. I will be back shortly in a few minutes to see who's here. Um, I am going to start soon. Let me just type that in the chat. Yeah, I am going to start soon. Just waiting for more people to arrive. Or viewers, I should say. I'm waiting for more viewers to arrive. So, yeah, I'm going to talk about my Eagle Scout progress, my scout career, and any questions you guys might have. Boop. Okay. So yeah, I will be right back. I'm just going to grab some water, make sure my notes are all good, that my stream is set up. Um, I just spent the last hour and a half preparing for this, so hopefully it all goes well. Um, yeah, so I'll be right back. And hopefully you guys can hear this. This is my intro. I don't know if it's too quiet or not, but let me just put it up a little bit. Heck yeah. Alright, I will be back shortly. Don't go away.
All right. Yes. Hi. I'm here now. Just got my mic unmuted. I will start in three minutes. So what this is going to be about, just a little explanation of my stream. Usually, uh, the second... Yeah, I just started talking now. I, have, I, I unmuted my mic. So you guys should be able to hear me. Um, there we go. Yeah, OBS is unmuted on my end. So you could, you could, you should be able to hear me now, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sorry, the chat is delayed by like thirty seconds. So, <laughs> if you guys put something down and I don't immediately respond, it's not my fault. The chat's delayed by thirty seconds or so. Anyway. This stream, it's, I already put it in the chat, but for the viewers that just got here, um, basically in Boy Scouts, there are seven ranks. To get the last rank, Eagle Scout, you need to do something called a service project. Now, my service project took a long time to get done, and it cost over $530. So my, my, goal, for this, um, my goal for this stream is to raise $530. Uh, and also, I'm going to be talking about my Eagle Scout progress in general, uh, my scouting career, any tips that I can give you guys on starting an Eagle Scout service project. Any questions you guys have, I'll answer those too. And you know, if you have some stuff to donate, that'd be much obliged because I need to raise $530. So if you have anything, that'd be amazing. <laughs> oh yeah, I got 10 viewers. That's cool. Yeah, I'm gonna start in like two minutes. Like actually legit start. I'm just I just have I have a curse on my channel. Like every single live stream I've done, I keep thinking to myself, oh, I'll just wait a tiny bit longer before starting. And then I'm like, you know what? I'll just do my intro now. I do my intro, I do my whole spiel, and then I get a crap ton of viewers right afterwards and I have to say it again. Um, there should be a button right below the chat room. It says, show your support for Eagle Scout Mac Guzman. It's like a dollar sign in a box. If you press that, you should be able to send money to the stream. I'm not going to, like, beg or anything, but I'm going to politely urge you <laughs> to donate because, again, I need to raise $530 somehow. So, good news is, I actually did just get paid by YouTube. I got $120, so that'll help a lot. But... You know, just an overall goal of 530 is my main point. Alright, just a couple more minutes and I will actually start. Yeah, the donation button is right next to the emoji button. So, yeah. And, and anything would help. Even if you donate one cent, I will be very happy boy. <laughs> oh, happy boy scout. Aha, I'm so funny. Alright, let me just drink some water before I accidentally kill my throat. Oh yeah, that's what it's called, Super Chat, yeah. That's how you donate money, through the Super Chat. Alright, so, we got 12 viewers, it's now 12.15, let's actually start. First, let me just test this. If I do this, you guys should be able to see some random tools and materials, is that correct? I clicked the thingy-majig, so you guys should be able to hear me. You should be able to see, like, tools on the screen, or on the ground. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Sorry. I, I, again, it's it's, uh, it's about 30 seconds late. Yeah. You guys can hear me talk, right? Someone asked sound. Sean Bryant, thank you for the four ninety nine. It means a lot. Thank you very much for donating. It means a lot. Okay, so you guys can hear me. You can see that. All right, my test should be good. Okay, okay. Let's actually start now then. Let me put this back up. And then let me go like this. Sorry for the loud clicking. Just getting with the tabs open. Okay. Also, I figured out how to do this, blue screen, and then, boom.
pretty fancy, right? I didn't have that on my other live streams. Anyway, welcome to the live stream. Today is a special one. It's going to be about my Eagle Project progress of like my Eagle Scout service project. And on this live stream, I'm going to be talking about the project, uh, how my scouting career is, any questions you guys have, and also talking about the before and after on my project. As you can see, it's kind of hard to tell what the pictures are, but I think those were the best ones I got of the before and after. I mean, I do have more, but that would I meant that would fit on the screen. Basically, up top, that's a walkway to a dock, and it's very overgrown and stuff. And the picture below is afterwards we cleared the overgrowth. Um, there's some benches there and railings. So I will be talking about my project and also talking about some tips on how to start your own project because I know some of my friends are starting their own Eagle Scout projects and they're kind of confused on how to start out. So, yes, I will be I will be um reading the chat. Sorry if I don't answer your guys' questions immediately. One, because the chat is delayed. Two is because I'm watching for donations. And three is because I'm actually reading off my slides and stuff. So, yeah. Pull the squash. Oh, Smoothie. Oh my gosh. Hi. <laughs> yeah, Smoothie is uh, one of my closest friends on Discord. Oh, I forgot to link my Discord stuff in the description. Oh, well. I'll probably put all my Discord in, in at the end of the live stream because I use Discord like every day. Blue Warlord says you got Super Chat. Yes, I do have Super Chat. Whoa, what is Super Chat? Well, you see, if you have um, if you have some um, some stuff to donate to me, you should definitely donate something because I need to raise five hundred and thirty dollars, <laughs> which is a lot. But I did just get almost five dollars, so. I'm one hundredth of the way there, guys. <laughs> Andy Hornseth, hello, thank you for being on the stream. Check it out, 07, Smoothie, Poe the Squash, Blue Warlord, Bookworm for Life. Much obliged, thank you for being here. Alright, done with my intro. I actually got viewers, so let's get right into the actual stream. First, I'm going to be talking about my progress on the Eagle Scout Service Project. Basically, what happened and how I did it. Um, the progress of when I first started it into where I ended it. This is going to be a brief overview so far, then I will get into the details. So, first off, I started back in late May, early July, about five months ago, somewhere around that time, because I figured that I... because I wanted to get... Um, okay, just a little context, actually. The whole goal of my YouTube channel, Eagle Scout Matt Guzman, is to get Eagle Scout. And my phrase is to get Eagle Scout in under two years. And that was my goal, and I was super close to it, and COVID happened. So I didn't get Eagle in under two years, but it's still around the two-year mark, so that's good. So my, my plan was to start in late May, early July, and get done with it before summer ended. So I started around the beginning of summer. My first idea was to build a bus stop, or not to build, but to lead the construction of a bus stop at my chartered church, which meant that um, for, the, for all the people that use the church, that go to the church, who don't have a car, or maybe they just take the bus, I was going to revamp the bus stop they had there already and have what they call a smoking shelter, or basically just, you know, the frames that you see for bus stops. I was going to build one of those. The only problem was... When the pro proposal was approved, it was already about mid-summer, and I really wanted the proposal to be approved early summer, because how this works is there's like this whole workbook that's like over 30 pages long, and you have a lot of stuff to fill out, so I wanted to get this done as early as possible, because that left more time to do the actual planning after the proposal. So the only thing is, after I began to plan my project, the project got kicked back right before I started due to COVID-19. So I did all this planning, I had my ideas set, I even set sent everything off, all my paperwork, I sent it off to the person that's called the project beneficiary. Basically, that's just fancy for the guy I'm doing this for, you know? So, the person that I was doing this for, we had everything approved, the idea was sent off, all my paperwork was good, and I was right about to start. And then, like, you know, the world shut down and said no right before I started. So my project got kicked back. And then eventually he told me, yeah, it's not going to work out. Which really sucked because I had everything planned out. 
But you know, that's that's why we uh, be prepared for things because I kind of expected that to happen. And to be honest, the project was a little much for me because it would have cost over $2,000 to build a bus stop. It's pretty freaking crazy, right? So that's a little background on like me in general, how my progress went for that. Uh, hold up, let me look at my chat real quick. Scroll, scroll, scroll. All right, yeah. <laughs> Your creepy uncle said, lol, imagine being Matt Guzman. Dude, imagine. Andy Hornseth said, but did he join in sixth grade or later on? Uh, are you talking about, like, when I joined Scouts? I joined Scouts in the middle, or I joined Boy Scouts, my bad. I joined Boy Scouts in the middle of fifth grade because... You know, I'll actually explain that later, because if you don't know how Boy Scouts work, the timeline gets confusing, so I will answer that question later. But basically, yeah, I started in fifth grade, and then in middle school, I took a break. High school, came back to Boy Scouts, and that's when I made my goal to get Eagle Scout in two years. So yeah, speaking of Eagle Scout, let's continue with the video. So my progress on my project... After my project, or more my original idea for the project, got kicked back, I began my idea of the dock railings and or benches. So, basically, um, when I was searching for stuff to do, I helped out two of my friends with their projects, and one of my friends built a, uh, like a, uh, what's it called? It's like a porch, that's what it's called. They built a porch in this housing area. Also, in this housing area was just a dock. It was, you know, had a walkway, had a dock. It was the, basically the first picture I showed in the beginning. It was really overgrown, so I decided to build or to lead the construction of docks, of the dock railings and benches. So, what I did this time to make sure that the beneficiary didn't back out was to meet with him multiple times, and also the 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 house that was right next to the dock i also informed the owner of that house what i was doing so she like didn't think i was just some creepo hanging around the dock next to her house but you know consistent communication is very important because that's probably one of the reasons why my first idea didn't work so i made sure to keep my communication very consistent so then i sent in a, another proposal this one I made more detailed, I made sure I had everything set out, and it was approved again, which is very good. I had the meeting that I needed to with one of the board members. Basically, that's just fancy for making sure they say yes. <laughs> so, yeah, after everybody said yes, you're good to go. Then I coordinated the date of the project, which was October 17th. Uh, I coordinated the volunteers who was going to show up any adult leaders, fellow scouts, my friends. Transportation, because, uh, tra like, transportation in general of, like, people, of materials, of supplies and tools, and the materials list, because that took me forever to figure out. All right. Also, I will be explaining later in the live stream the very, like, you know, a uh, full walkthrough of my project, what happened, what I did. This is just an overview of my progress so far. So, for those of you that are kind of confused, what is the service project? So, as I mentioned before, um, for those of you that just got here on the stream, there are seven ranks in Boy Scouts, and the last one is called Eagle Scout. And one of the things you have to do is to do a service project. You need to lead a service project. So it's an opportunity to demonstrate leadership. You have to perform a project for the benefit of a community, it requires a lot of leadership skills and significant effort to complete because a scout must plan, develop, and lead the project and it must be done before the 18th birthday of that scout. I turn 18 very, very shortly in a f just like a little under, uh, a little under five months, I think. I can't do math in my head right now. <laughs> Don't worry, I know my own birthday. It's just math doesn't work right now. But very, I, I turn 18 in a few months, so I'm really trying to get this done. So, yeah, again, my original plan was to get this done in, in during the summer, but the world said no. So the service project is all this stuff I just said, and once, I, once a scout gets that done, then they're eligible to actually get the last rank. So, for the Eagle Scout service project, it's never too early to start thinking of ideas. 
Now, this portion of the stream is going to be directed towards my viewers who ask me about the projects in general. I've had friends come up to me, I've had viewers come up to me, I've had people ask me, like, how do I start a project, or how did you complete your project? So this portion of the stream will be kind of a, a tips and a, a helpful guide on how I started and, you know, my tips to you on how you can start a project. So, first idea, no matter how old you are, no matter what rank you are, it's never too early to start thinking of ideas for your service project. Because, you know, if, if you're like 14 and you're thinking, oh, I have plenty of time to get this done, you know, that's exactly what I thought, and then I realized, oh shoot, I have six months until I turn 18, where the crap did time go? So, <laughs> always think of ideas as soon as possible. Look at projects around your area. I've mentioned this before, there is a area that I go to a lot called Wickham Park, they do a lot of events there. There's multiple Eagle Scout projects like uh, flag posts, fire pits, benches, uh, fences, areas for people to like play, all that good stuff. So look around for projects in your area to get uh, inspiration. If possible, aid other Life Scouts in your troop uh, in their projects to get a general idea because that's what I did. That's the whole reason I found my idea in the first place because it was in the same area as my friend's project. Also, contact your unit leader. So I had to contact my scoutmaster to give me ideas in the first place. And it's really helpful, if, especially if you have no clue what you're doing, just to talk with the adult leaders so they can help you guide, guide you through it. Also, an important person to contact is the Life to Eagle Coordinator. There's different names for it, but I know it as the Life to Eagle Coordinator. It's exactly what it sounds like. It helps scouts that are life coordinate them to Eagle Scout. And that person is really helpful to make sure you have all the requirements. Because for Eagle Scout, the project isn't the only thing. You need to have six months of activity in the server, and server, psh, uh, in the troop. My bad, I'm thinking of Discord for some reason. Six months of activity in the troop, six months in a position of responsibility, which is fancy terms for you need to lead people. You also need to get 21 merit badges, which is very hard to do. You need to do your project, and then you need to complete a rank application. So all that stuff is very difficult. So the Life to Eagle coordinator is very helpful. Yeah. Now, some tips for the service project. Uh, obviously, know who the troop's Life to Eagle coordinator is. Get their contact information. So if you have any questions, that you can get help from them. Have contacts for important people by that oh i didn't read chat i gotta switch over aj tans oh my gosh thank you <laughs> he says he donated ten dollars saying <laughs> you have to help me with mine <laughs> mk pro elite donated two dollars saying go get it done thank you very much guys aj i got you AJ, aj tans is in my troop so i'm going yeah I, i'll definitely help you if you need anything my dude like thank you for the donation MK Pro Elite, thank you very much as well, dude. That means a lot. Like, I met MK Pro Elite on Discord, and he's uh, he got his Eagle Scout project right before COVID happened. So, <laughs> kind of ironic, my friend MK Pro Elite, he got his project done right before the world said no. I got mine rejected right as the world said no. <laughs> oh, Kai, hello. Hi, thank you. Um... She says, she says, Kai, you are of godly status. Sorry, I was busy on my on my slides for my live stream. I'm looking at chat real quick. I read fast, so I just got caught up on my on my chat. So, yes, Ira, thank you for <laughs> thank you for being on the stream. Andy Hornseth, I am reading chat now. Thank you for all the donations. Uh, Andy, thanks for the donations. Uh, AJ, thank you. MK Pearly, thank you. <laughs> all right sorry i wasn't looking at chat i'm trying to <laughs> i get distracted very easily you guys know this so i'm trying to just get with my slides done so i can get to my project oh my gosh matthew matthew's like my best friend in real life thank you for showing up to the stream man it means a lot all right andy hornseth asks have you done online merit badges actually i have if you go to my videos um if you just scroll down by like 
eight to ten videos, I think. I made a video explaining how I did online merit badges and what they were, so you should definitely check that out. After the stream, of course, not right now. <laughs> but yeah, let me get back to my slides. So, so I'm talking about the service project. Think of multiple ideas before acting on one. And keep in mind costs and fundraising. You know, speaking of cost and fundraising, that's what my viewers were asking me to do. Check chat because people were donating to the stream. Thank you very much for donating because it means a lot. Because for those of you that just got here, I need to raise $530. So, I... Uh, Matthew Lopez says, I, says, love you. I love you too, dude. <laughs> Alright, um... Let me go back to the slides. I'm not going to spend the entire thing just talking about slides. My plan for the live stream is just get with my tips, just get my tips out there, and then switch to like my photos of my actual project and talk about that in detail, and then switch back to the slides to provide a guide on more tips on, you know, how I did my service project. So, yeah, cost and fundraising because that's a big part. The I mean, it's actually better to have less than 500 because it's supposed to be if you have over $500, you need to submit an application for fundraising, which sounds weird, but that's just how it works. So originally, my project was under $500. I had it at like 494 The only reason why it's over is is because I did a something as a bonus for my beneficiary and meaning I just I did a little bit more in my original plan than I intended to and I will explain what that is later but basically that up to the cost by like $35 so yeah I need to raise $530 if you're building something which I did think about permits in the area because that's important if you don't get your proper permits Whoever's supposed to approve your project can literally just say you can't do this without the permit and then you literally can't do anything until you get your permits. So make sure you have permits. Those are important. So these are all very important things. Think of your idea. Make sure you're contacting the right people. Keep in mind costs and fundraising. Think about permits. All right. So the Eagle Scout Service Project Workbook, this is that thing I was talking about that's like over 30 pages long. Very intimidating at first. The only thing good about it is that it's split into three different stages. Um, so the actual thing online is an Adobe, uh, it's a PDF, it's an Adobe Reader, so make sure you have Adobe downloaded. If not, I'm pretty sure there's an adult leader that would have Adobe, you can like coordinate with them. So it's easy to open this up. I think it's better to do it online actually, because if you're writing it down on paper, which I did at first, there's a lot of erasing and a lot of trying to fit things in the box. However, if it's online, just, you know, quickly, quickly, I did a thing. Quickly, clack, type it into the document. All right, so I'm not exactly sure what slide I'm on. Let me, uh, let me check my chat real quick. Do, 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 scrolling. All right, so let me go back into this. Different stages of the service project. There's the proposal, which is what you need to, before you actually do anything, you need to submit a proposal, which is like what I'm going to do, basically. Except very detailed and very unnecessarily complicated, but it's worth it. Then you have the project plan, which is like as you're doing the project, what you plan to do for it. All the specific details of like materials, your tools list. And then the project report after you do it. I just got finished with my project report a few days ago and I sent it off to get approved, so that's good. All right, what slide is this? All right, so now I'm done talking with the slides for now. Here's the fun part, guys. I get to actually talk about my project. Woohoo! Okay, so let me uh, do a thingy. Hopefully OBS works. Boop, screen black. Boop, screen should be not black, right? Or did it mess up? There we go. Ah, okay, hopefully you guys can see a bunch of materials on the ground. ASMR. Sorry, I was going to drink a water. I don't want my throat to die. Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh, my throat. <clears> throat. Okay. Let me get up back to here. Hopefully you guys should be able to see that. 
All right, cool. Yes, I'm going to talk about my doc now. Wait, that sounds weird. I'm going to talk about my project, which was on the doc. So, basically, I was in a good mood because I, you know, this was around the end of summer. Uh, I got my first project rejected, but I got my new project idea approved. So I'm sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, I can, you know, build the benches. I can build the railings. I can coordinate all this stuff. And then I'm sitting here thinking, how do I build a bench? <laughs> because I, I didn't know how to build a bench. So that's another important tip for doing Eagle Scout projects. Do your freaking research because you're going to end up like me to where you're thinking, oh my gosh, I know everything. I know what I'm doing. And then you're sitting here thinking, wow, how to build bench. So um, my dad did me a favor. He had um, a uh, little thing about my dad. He almost never throws stuff away, and he always plans ahead for things. I don't know how, but he had exactly enough wood in his garage to have enough supplies for me to build a prototype bench. And it was like exactly enough too, which is really weird. <laughs> so, yeah. Don't quote me on stuff that I say out of the blue. You guys know that I get distracted easily and I just say things. That's not fair. Anyway, so yeah, these are the supplies that I was using because you need to coordinate, during your project, you need to coordinate your materials, your tools, and your supplies. So this was me trying to get all that done. I was writing down all the tools I needed and also trying to make sure I had enough wood in general, like to actually build the bench. So, let me switch, go, boop, there we go. So first, actually constructing the benches. I needed to make a prototype, so I had kind of a blueprint. So what my dad and I did is we sat down at the table and started thinking of ideas and how to build the bench. So we had four by fours, two by sixes, and two by eights at first. And basically, we were just thinking of measurements, because if you're building anything, measurements are very important. So we were just trying to make sure we had good measurements on cutting wood in the right place, making sure the, the proper length, and, you know, making sure we actually have the right type of wood, because I'm saying wood a lot. I should probably not say that. <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought. Let's just skip over to the next slide. Basically... That's what the prototype bench looked like at first, after we got all the measurements done. And the good thing about building the prototype bench is that I was able to find any flaws in the original design, mainly trying to get the supports together. Originally, we put the supports on the outside, but you, you can see there, there's like the, the, the uh, pieces, there's the planks, I can't speak, my gosh, the planks that are slightly lighter. Those are like kind of the braces to hold the frames together. We put it on the outside at first, then realized A, it looks ugly, two, it's very impractical, so we decided to add more support on the inside, and that's what we went with in the final design. Also, how the top was going to work. We were trying to figure out what the top of the bench would look like. Obviously, comparing it to this, that's way too high of a bench, so we were thinking... The area, I don't know if you guys can see my cursor, probably not, but basically that top section just needs to go because that's way too high. So when we were looking at it here, we were trying to figure out if the top section is going to go, how would we want the top section to look like because we don't want to get rid of the top because what we were thinking is that plank that's right below, if we just get rid of that and then, you know, shorten the length of the actual post, then the entire back of the bench would be lower. So that was our thought process. We were just trying to figure out how to fit the pieces together, like a whole giant puzzle. You know, and there's there's the, um, the actual seat as well. Now, we got the plan done. The prototype is finished. I was trying to freaking... <laughs> our plan was to meet up with the beneficiary. Remember, the beneficiary is basically the guy who says, yes, do this for me. So we were trying to meet up with him at the dock and say, boom, look at our prototype. Except, you know, we spent all that time getting the materials, getting the measurements. We didn't 
take into account the height of the bench and that it wouldn't fit into our van. So <laughs> we were all excited because we got done at like night and we were very exhausted. We're like, oh, we can't wait to show this to the beneficiary tomorrow. The next day we go to put it in the back of the van and we're like, it's too big. <laughs> so we didn't even get to show the beneficiary. But I took the pictures and I showed him anyway. And he was impressed with the design and we told him about our fixes to the design as well. So he was happy with it. That's all that matters as long as the beneficiary says yes. Because at the end of the day, you can have all these plans. You can do the entire project. But if the person who says yes doesn't say yes, then that's an issue. So you got to make sure that the project beneficiary approves of it. Anyway, that's the pro prototype. That's what it looks like. Pretty cool stuff. Moving on. Now, that was just spare pieces of wood. You know, we needed to actually, well, I needed to actually, like, get the details on exactly what materials I was going to purchase. So how I did that is I waited last minute. <laughs> so if you're doing your Eagle Scout service project, don't wait last minute to do things because you're going to end up rushing like I always do. But basically, I needed to figure out the length of the, the planks. Uh, like I needed to see how many 2x4s I needed, how many 2x6s, uh, how long they needed to be, the measurements. Uh, oh, the type of wood as well. Since it's outside, I did not know this. My dad and a unit leader had to tell me this. Pressure-treated wood. You need that. Because if you don't have that for things that are for outside construction, the wood's going to fall apart easily. So I needed to keep that in mind to buy pressure-treated wood. So I sat down one night and spent hours planning everything specifically with my dad. And he was very helpful, trying to make sure I understood exactly how how money works and how buying stuff like this works. So... Then we went to Lowe's, we bought stuff, you know, getting the materials, pressure treated wood. And a good thing, good thing to point out, when you're buying materials, make sure you're buying the correct length and the correct type, because we almost bought the wrong thing, and we caught it, you know, but make sure you're buying the right stuff, and you're getting the proper amount. You know, it's okay if you have a little over what you're like intending to do if that makes sense basically think of it this way this is what my dad always tells me you can always have too much of something it's better to have too much of something because if you take too much away then you can't get that back because you've already taken it away the same thing applies to when you're cutting pieces of like if you're cutting wooden planks it's always better to measure it out first to make sure you cut the right amount because once you cut too much that plank is useless so yeah, buying the materials took a while. Thankfully, because I coordinated with the adult leader to the left, we were able to use his truck to get everything to my project site. So, this is us taking everything out and loading everything into... Well, not really loading everything. We were unloading it from his truck to my project site. And he, here's a little joke saying that I'm working him to death because... As the leader of the project, you're not actually supposed to do anything. You're supposed to lead it. So <laughs> this is just a joke that it's back-breaking work. Haha, <laughs> funny. But he was very helpful. We, he, let him, we, uh, he let us use his truck, and we were able to transport everything and lay them out on my project site. So that was very nice. And boom, that's the dock. It's so pretty, right? Look at that. <laughs> it's, it's literally just a dock and so much overgrowth and you know the good thing about um the good thing about my project is that the entire thing is based around safety you need benches for relaxation i can't speak what you need the benches for relaxation you need the railings for safety guards so you don't fall in you need to clear the overgrowth so you know people don't trip and fall so the the reason why that's good is because the main reason that most Eagle Scout proposals get kicked back in the first place is because they don't address safety. And since my project is based entirely around safety, it was very easy to get it through that stage, especially because um, uh, my dad and I know how to word things fancily. Like we were saying, <laughs> let, me give, let me give you an example, actually. Um, all right. 
Sorry, I'm scrolling through my... Not scrolling. I'm flipping through my papers. Uh, all right. So, here we go. Uh, it's, for example, a piece of the paperwork says, please provide a brief description of your project and the impact it will have. Big brain. I said, I led, supervised, and directed the construction of three benches on an existing dock and railings on the walkway at insert address here that I'm not going to say out loud. The project provides safety measures for those who use the dock. So, you know, just making sure everything, you get your point across, you make it sound fancy, and you use the correct wording. Because, as I said before, you're supposed to demonstrate leadership. So if you say things like, I'm going to build this, or I'm going to make sure this gets done, those aren't really correct terminology. You're supposed to say things like, I'm going to supervise my volunteers. I'm going to assist them in building this. I'm going to lead the project. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guide my volunteers. So speaking of guiding my volunteers, that was kind of an issue because it's a dock. It's wonky. It's 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 over the water, so if too many people are on the dock, it could upset the balance and people could fall in. So that was something I had to keep in mind. Ooh, more pictures of the overgrowth. Yes. So basically, this is what I was dealing with. I dealt with overgrowth. I was dealing with the dock itself, making sure we were balancing our weight properly. And also, once we were constructing the benches and the railings to make sure that we didn't drop any tools in the water or any materials and making sure we didn't fall into the water by, you know, losing our balance. So, more overgrowth. I took a lot of pictures of the overgrowth for some reason. I just thought it'd be helpful <laughs> because I wanted to see a before and after of the area before, like, all this stuff, and then afterwards of what it looked like. Also, if you look, like, in between where it's sticking out of the boards, those boards are actually cracked. You can see it, like, right here. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but right there, you can see those cracks. So, the reason why my project is a little over $500 is because I didn't see these boards when I first made my project plan. So, my original project plan to do all the brailings and benches was $494. Then I realized, after I sent in my my proposal, these six boards here need replacing. And I know that because then when I went out to scope the project again, I stepped on the board and it broke. So then I realized, crap, this is going to cost more money. And it did, because now it costs 530 The good thing is, because the original plan was still under $500, I didn't need to turn in a fundraiser application because this was just a bonus thing. Because technically, it wasn't part of my plan, it was just something bonus I did. And since it's for safety, you know, that's a good thing too because it didn't get questioned. So far, I haven't seen anything wrong with this. I haven't been stopped about it. So, it's fine, yeah. Now, let's get into the actual project itself. I've been rambling and making sure... <laughs> keeping you guys on edge forever. Now, let's get through the actual, um, oh wait, let me read chat first. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, who is that masked man? Uh, people, yes. <laughs> oh, uh, overgrowth. Oh, you, uh, oh yeah, one of you guys are asking, Uncle Iroh asks, hey Maria, are you his sister? Yes, Maria Guzman is my little sister. She has her own YouTube channel where she does Roblox, I think. Recently, she posted an Among Us video that she did. It uh, Actually, an animation she made, so that was pretty cool. Anyway, let's go to the project. Boop. All right. First things first, getting my workspace set up. I needed to figure out how I was going to cut the materials where the actual volunteers were going to hang out and stuff. So I have a first aid section there. I have two first aid kits. And then off to the right, I also had some chairs. I had six chairs and an umbrella in case it rained. So instead of an overhang, I just brought an umbrella because it was easier. And it wasn't supposed to rain this day, so I didn't bring an overhang. I just, bought, uh, I just brought an umbrella for shade because it wasn't supposed to rain. Now, clearing the overgrowth. This is the first step before we did anything. So, I 
told them my view of what I wanted just to clear out the entire overgrowth there by about three feet or so, so nothing was sticking out over the edges and everything was trimmed. So that's what they were doing. Again, making sure they don't fall in and just keeping in mind that everyone is wearing masks. That was also a very important safety thing, making sure everybody wore a mask during the actual project because, you know, COVID and everything. As they were clearing it, I was making sure that they were using the proper materials, they were using clippers there, and also, you know, just making sure everyone's actually doing something. It's, even if you have too many volunteers, that's fine, just make sure people know what they're doing, that's the whole point of you having a plan, so everything goes smoothly. I mean, there was literally some people just kind of pulling weeds out from, like, the edges there, which was actually very helpful, because then once we started attaching the posts to the side of the dock, it was clear for us without getting our hands caught in the overgrown vegetation. As they were doing that, the adults were working on the electrical tools. So that's one of the adult leaders. Um, he made a very good point when we started buying the materials. My original prototype used nails, but he strongly suggested that we use screws instead, which kind of upped my price a little bit, but it was totally worth it because everything stayed together. So. Uh, he's an engineer, so he kind of knew what he was doing, which I was very fortunate for, because I had my plan for the dock and the railings, but I didn't know how I was going to actually attach the posts to the side of the dock, so he figured out how he was going to do this. So we had a plan, he had a plan, I had my people doing their own thing, I had the adult leaders cutting the wood and putting the holes in the posts so we could screw the bolts into the side of the dock, you know? everything's going great you know nothing's gonna go wrong right i have everything planned out <laughs> right no so he drilled the holes for us so that made sure that when we put it to the side of the dock it would be screwed in all the way through and flushly attached we cut uh, well we didn't cut one of the adult leaders my dad he was cutting the posts using a compound circular saw or sorry compound miter saw because only adults can use electrical saws like that. or So yeah, so my dad was doing that, making sure the measurements that we made were he was getting them correct, which he did, and he cut all the posts. Then he started measuring, like, because um, the posts were eight feet long, so some of them for the front legs of the bench needed to be cut at 16 inches. So that's what he was doing. He was measuring them off and then cutting them again. So the front legs of the bench were what is what he's cutting now. Here's just the materials that I kept um, in case. The top right, you can see there's uh, tools here. These are just spare electrical tools because my the, the other, the engineer adult guy, <laughs> That sounds kind of weird to say. I don't want to say his real name. We're just going to call him The Engineer <laughs> because he was the one that made the plans for um, how we were going to attach it to the dock. So The Engineer guy had all his tools. These were just spare tools I had as backup. Here's some hammers and stuff because I forgot that we weren't using nails. We were using screws. Here's some wood that we were going to use later to replace those boards that were wonky and then the first aid kits. Uh, here's more of the tools again. I, I, it's really important to keep track of everything because you need to make sure uh, like you have what your original plan was, you need to stick to it. If things go south, it's always good to have a plan B. So workstations, keeping your workstation clean is very important. I know that doesn't look very clean, but that's actually the best we had because things got messy really fast. So um, luckily, Mr. Engineer <laughs> brought two workbenches that we were able to keep stuff on, and it's very helpful because then we could uh, have the, uh, have like instead of the adults doing everything, there are certain tools that are electrical that scouts can use if they're a certain age. So yeah, that's what they were doing. So as the, uh, as my dad was cutting the posts, Mr. Engineer came over to teach younger the other not the younger my bad he came over to teach the other scouts uh how to drill holes into the posts so that was nice so here's just a little update on how everything was going here's a little video hopefully you hear it what were you doing huh? what were you doing what what were you doing what? cutting that's right because we're clearing out 
Oh yeah, thanks for freezing on me. That's great. Uh, so wow. Wow. We can have space. The world likes me right now. I'm just gonna pause that. Basically, I was really hoping that would work. Basically, I wanted I wanted him to sound enthusiastic while he was doing it. So boo -doo -doo, he was cutting, and I panned over to my other friends here as they were starting to get the posts attached to the dock. So, Mr. Engineer was making sure the posts were in place. We had to measure out the distance between them. So this is where the one was gonna go. There's one, another one. Another one was over here. Another one over there. Another one over there. And on this side, three more here. So one, two, three. And then for the railings, you had one, two, three. On this side, one, two, three. And this side, we called this the lake side, was kept open because for people that actually use the dock for fishing or for canoeing, they can bring their canoes and kayaks over and, you know, use the dock to mount off. So we kept the side open. So basically, bench here, bench here, bench here, and then on the walkway there's railings. So they're attaching the posts there right now. And then that's that took us forever to figure out the measurements on how we were going to put it and how we were going to do it. So that's him. That's one of my friends giving the next symbol because that's just how we are. But basically, that post took forever to put in there. It took us like 30 minutes. So, yeah. Uh, I had a plan to get everything done in three hours, so I didn't have to buy lunch. And so we got out of there before it started raining because it wasn't supposed to rain. First thing that went on... Or, sorry, on, my bad. First thing that went wrong in my plan, time consumption. We spent too much time trying to make sure all the measurements were correct and everything, that we kept missing out on very important details, like, you know, t taking 30 minutes to put in one post, but then we got the others in eventually. Also, trying to make sure that the posts we were going to put in had brackets on them so we could screw those into the, 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 the dock. I can't speak. I need some water. Hold up. Ah. But yeah, making measurements on where to add the brackets. So how we were doing this is we were measuring the distance of the posts that my dad cut. We were screwing in the brackets. Then we were bringing the brackets over to the workbenches so they could screw in the holes and then they put the bolts in to be attached to the side of the dock. That was the plan. Only thing is, we were having a dandy old time. As they were getting the posts in the side of the dock, we were getting the brackets into these posts and making sure that they were screwing it in. We realized we put the brackets on the wrong side of the post, and even worse, Mr. Engineer accidentally screwed the holes in on the wrong side of the post which meant we had to unscrew all the stuff, that all these brackets that we just finished screwing, we had to unscrew them, put them on the opposite side, and screw them back on because they were on the wrong side, and then the holes in the post were drilled on the wrong side. So that took about 30 minutes to correct that. So hopefully this video works. If not, I'm going to be sad. Yeah. <laughs> As you can clearly see, I am... Yeah, straighten that nail. Oh, so close. Yeah! <laughs> that was just us messing around with the brackets. Basically, you saw how time consuming that was. So, when we messed up and we had to measure everything again, and you can imagine how frustrated we were and how long it took to correct that. But it was okay because as we were correcting it, I had um, this scout here was measuring the distance out to reattach these. And then also Mr. Engineer was showing him how to drill holes into these properly. Um, the, actually, not properly, sorry. This was before we figured out it was on the wrong side. So we were just still figuring out drilling the holes in. And then when we when we messed that up, uh, we had to take these brackets off and switch them in the opposite direction here. So that took about another 30 minutes to complete. So this is an example of, you know, me not doing the work and making sure they're guiding each other. Because again, I'm supposed to be leading it, so 
I asked my friend what he's doing, and he said he can help out with the posts. I had my other friend on this side hold the post in place, and then I had Mr. Engineer properly show this scout how to drill the holes. So that actually went pretty smoothly getting that done, because I honestly thought that was going to take longer. But because, you know, I actually led that properly, it didn't take very long, so I was very happy about that. You did it straight! I like that clip I did because it basically just showed the line of work, you know, how we were getting everything done, how we were getting everything cut, and, you know, just showing how it was nice to see that, like, me being able to video all of that, to see that my leadership was making everything run really efficiently, because even after we realized we messed up, we just got it done and switched all the brackets around and just went right back to installing the posts on the dock. So instead of, like, keeping them on the grass, we probably should have actually kept them on the grass, but I thought it would be easier to set the posts on the dock, especially because it would help balance out the weight to where when Mr. Engineer and a few of the scouts were holding the posts in place on this side, the dock would dip on this side. So if we had the other posts on the opposite side, then it wouldn't dip as much. So that was one thing we figured out. So we set the posts out of the way so we didn't trip on them. Because again, safety hazards, you don't want to fall in the, wa in the water. So making sure that was good. Here's us when we started to put it together. Now, this is a difference of about one hour. Compare this picture to this picture. Or this picture. Besides the obvious, you know, there's a structure here. What else do you guys notice about this picture compared to these two pictures? Something very obvious that makes us very sad. Do any, do any of you guys see what the obvious difference is between those pictures and the other one? <laughs> Chat's delayed a little bit, so this might take me a couple minutes to get your guys' answers. But can you guys spot out the difference between those pictures besides the structure? <laughs> Alright, let me read chat real quick. Scrolling. Scrolling. Alright. Sorry, I was reading chat. And also, yeah. JR Animation Studios got it right. Complete weather change. The difference between... Um, I gotta switch tabs. The difference between this is it's obviously rained. Everyone looks so sad, and we're all crowded on the dock. So what happened was, it was not supposed to rain this day. Even if we went over the time limit, which we did, because instead of taking three hours, it took like six, I think, it wasn't supposed to rain. And out of nowhere, we finally started attaching the posts. We got the brackets all redone, we got the holes here, like, all on the right side, and we were finally installing. And we got everything on the dock, we got all our electrical tools here, and it started to rain for a straight 30 minutes. And we were, we finally, you know, like, even though the, pro the project was moving pretty efficiently, a lot of things just kept going wrong. So <laughs> there was a straight 10 minutes to where before we installed this frame right here, us scouts, like the five of us right here, 
we were just sitting on the dock in the rain, just like sitting here, <laughs> just defeated. We were just, it was just pouring. We had to get all the all the uh, electrical tools underneath the umbrella and make sure all my papers didn't get wet. And then we just sat here. We could have very well sat underneath the umbrella, but I just thought it was so funny how we just collectively just gave up for 30 minutes. And then as soon as it stopped raining, we we're like, okay, let's get back into it. So then all of us got on the dock and started to, uh, started to construct the top portion of the bench. As I was saying before, we got rid of one of the middle sections, so the bench is actually shorter than the prototype. Which was helpful, because as we were starting to do this, we got the height right. We had the frames done here, which took a little while. But these frames, I was calling them part of the H-frames, and you'll see why in a second. But these basically are the front legs. They get attached to the floor here, and they go like this, and like that, and get attached there. So that's what the seat is and the front leg. And then here is us attaching it. So this is why it's called an H-frame, because it looks like an H. And you can see that's where the bracket was. And then they're attaching more brackets to get this H-frame attached to the floor, and then screwing it into the side of the post there. So this is just the framing for now, trying to make sure it's all there. The posts took about an hour to install, I think, because it was hard keeping it steady and getting the measurements right. So that took about an hour to do. All right, let me look at my chat real quick. Oh, by the way, this date is October 17th. This was when, this is before the tropical storms in Florida started happening. It just randomly rained out of nowhere. It was October 17th. <clears throat> anyway, let me go further again. So this is when we started getting the H-frames completely done, and I figured we should start applying the boards or the planks. It was just trying to get the H-frames in general. And remember what I said before, I made... I made a note to make sure these supports planks here were on the inside. So when the the seats were actually in place, it had something to attach to. And that's exactly what we did because then we attached it here. Also, the good thing about the compound miter saw is it made 45 degree cuts, which was very, very helpful. My dad did a really good job figuring that out because look at that corner piece. It was very nice. All our brackets are here too, and we just connected it. So that was connected, the top was connected, and we finally got the seats here connected too. All that was left was getting the middle section here. So let me just give for reference, this is what this looks like before we add this middle part. This is what the prototype looked like. So as you can see, it's way too high, and also we have two middle sections here, and also um, these are too big for planks. So then the updated version has two by sixes here. There's two two by sixes and there's just going to be one midsection and then the top. And it works because it's like the perfect height. It's like arm's length and then you can sit down in it too. So that was finally completed and then that was the corner bench. We still needed to complete the side bench which we did eventually too. So this was the completed bench. Like that's that's it. It was very... We were all very excited. We, we don't look like it in the picture. We're kind of just standing there. I'm pretty sure we were actually looking at the corner bench. So I went over to take a picture of the normal bench because they were all over on the other side. But basically, that's what it was. We had the H-frame, that, the middle section, top. Boom. Done. Yes. So that took like four hours. I think we're about four hours in at this point. And then this is around the five hour mark, getting all the rest of the planks attached. That's one of my friends. He's pretty cool. Um, this guy, actually, he hasn't made Eagle. I really wished he did, but he's still cool. He's chill. He's a life scout. And he came as a friend. So, love you, buddy. <laughs> so, yeah, there he was helping us hold these up in place so we could have screwed them into the posts. So that was nice. And then the bonus. So we got the dock done on the benches. We got that benches, this benches, and before we started the railings, because remember, this is just the benches, and we're about four hours in at this point, and I felt really bad because actually right now, it's our 1.11 p.m. 
I think right at this moment in this picture, it's around the same time. I made them skip lunch, and I felt really, really bad because we were supposed to be done by 12, and I made them stay until 4. A couple of them left at 3, which was fine because I don't blame them. Everyone was hungry. So I was just very thankful that they liked me enough to stay there. So thank you guys because we got it done. So after we got the benches, before installing the railings, we needed to replace the, the rotten planks here. The good thing about the rotten planks is that it was only the wood that was rotten, so we, we actually reused these screws because they were still in good condition. So we were taking all those out, and this was when a few of the people started leaving, so I had to get one of the adult leaders to do this too. And then once that was done, we started installing the planks here. Um, so this is what was left of our crew. We had about three scouts left i think we started with about six or seven and then the final reveal actually no before the final reveal i want to say this look how much the overgrowth is cleared look at that it's nice and clear also the dock is 12 feet long we figured instead of keeping the dock i mean sorry instead of keeping the railings the entire 12 foot distance we can just have eight feet of the distance because the measurements of the planks are all eight feet so if we kept those eight feet we didn't have to cut anything and that meant you know uh, eight minus twelve is four so that means there's four uh, four feet of that dock that's left open near the bottom here to where if someone needs to cut the overgrowth they don't have to reach over the railings they just go around on that area that isn't covered by the railings because the area that isn't covered by the railings actually just steps into the overgrowth. The railings cover the water, so that worked out perfectly. We didn't have to cut anything else. We just put the more of the posts in place, and then basically the same procedure we did right here. We have the midsection and then the top. Get the posts in, midsection, top. Boom. Done. So once the planks were done, bada bing, bada boom. Look at that. It's so pretty, <laughs> like honestly, look at that. It's a much, 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 uh, mucho good. How do you even speak? But I was so excited. Just comparing this, just a lot of overgrowth and just dock compared to boom. Look at that. So we have the railings here with the, uh, I can't speak the midsections, the railings, and then the replaced planks. We got the corner bench off to the left here. All this overgrowth is cleared out of the way, and also the other bench here as well. And then here's what the final corner bench looks like with nobody on it. Um, I did have a picture of all of us sitting on there, but I think it was a little bit too revealing because it was all, even though we had our masks, I just, I don't think, I don't think it's like necessary to show everyone's face. But this is what the bench looks like. This is the corner bench. Looks pretty cool. I liked it a lot. My little sister, Maria Guzman, she was lying down in here for a little bit. And then, yes. Here's, hopefully this video works too. This is, you can hear how excited I am. Today's October 17th. Finally did my freaking Eagle project. We got all this crap out of here. This, it was so overgrown, we couldn't even step here. But now it's all cleared out. There's like no overgrowth in this area. Built these freaking railings on this walkway. Replaced the broken boards. And finally, boom, benches. Did it. Took me six hours. <laughs> so I was really, really excited. I, didn't, I don't sound incredibly excited because I was exhausted. I, I had a very light breakfast and then I skipped lunch and I was working. Well, not really working, you know, I was just taking pictures and stuff, but it was still very exhausting. So I was, I was very tired. And yeah, it took like six hours to complete it when it should have taken three. So it was around four o'clock at this point. My entire family skipped lunch and the Mr. Engineer also skipped lunch. And yeah, I, f I felt kind of bad, but I was just happy that they stayed with me till the end. And the scouts that left early, I don't blame them. They were there for a while. And um, I really appreciate that they were there for me because I wouldn't, I literally would not have been able to do this if they weren't so, like, kind enough to help me. Because they could have very well just left at 12 o'clock 
and they could have also very well just not listened to me, but they were really nice. This is why they're the best, <laughs> and Anna, I'm really happy that they were able to help me out there, and they stayed with me, so thank you guys. Um, let me look at chat real quick, because I'm pretty sure that was the end of my slides. I mean, not my slides, sorry. That was the end of my pictures and stuff. Oh, Robin, thank you for being on the stream. I see you. Uh, let me look. Let me see. <laughs> oh, wow, I got 23 thumbs up and a thumbs down. That's not that bad, actually. Good. <laughs> Scrolling through chat, actually. There we go. Hey, Firebore62, what's up, Sean? All right, let's, uh... I guess I can continue... So that was it for my portion of the project. So let me, uh... Let me pull this final picture back up. I really like this picture. So I'm going to leave this picture up. I'm going to talk for just a few longer about my project. So with my project, after I completed it, I needed to, um... Uh, I needed to take note of how long people were there, any leftover materials, um, making sure all my tools that I borrowed got returned back to the people I borrowed it from, and if I was missing anything as part of the original plan. So the only thing, the only thing that I, uh, I, my brain stopped working. Sorry. Ah. Okay, the only thing that um, I, f I thought... I can't speak. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me get a drink of water. I lost my train of thought really fast. Ah, sorry. Okay. You're supposed to write down on the report if you were missing any materials or if you were over on materials. I was over because... We since we made that little shift at the end to only have eight feet of the railing instead of the entire twelve, we saved up on the wood, so we were able to return that and get money back. And also, um, uh, we also um, oh yeah yeah the railings. That's what I was trying to think of. We were had all the screws and everything for the railings, and we were installing everything, and on the posts. Each post takes two screw bolts or lag screws. We were one short. After all this, there was this post right here. We were one lag, sc lag screw short, and it annoyed me so much. Like, I was asking my dad, I'm like, oh, are we done yet? He's like, yeah, I just need to install this last lag screw. And I'm like, oh, great. And then we're looking around, we're like, where is it? And then we realize the box that we bought was like was like a box of like 22 or something we needed 23 so we were just one short which wasn't a problem all we did uh, my dad and i the next day just went to lowe's when we returned our materials that we were that we that we didn't use we also bought an extra screw and we just went back here and added it back in which is also kind of good because then i can add that to my report and how i mitigated that issue so that's what i did i wrote that down in my report Speaking of the report, after the project, the report is what you have to, you know, obviously fill out and report to all the higher-ups. I don't exactly know who approves it. Let me read again. Uh, flipping through my notes. Oh, yeah, the beneficiary needs to sign it, the guy who says the big yes. And I'm pretty sure the, the council board needs to do it as well. Oh, sorry, 25 I, I said I said 22 and 23. The numbers were actually, we needed 26 lag screws, and we only had 25. Sorry, I had the numbers mixed up. So, um, important things to keep in mind when I was doing my report, talking about what went wrong, talking about my original plan. I needed to write down observations and what was challenging. The rain was just on, even though it was depressing, it was actually kind of funny because we just finished our last issue and we just figured out how to get the posts onto the dock and then boom, it started raining right at that instant. So yeah, that was kind of funny because then we just, we literally just sat there for 10 minutes doing nothing on the dock. We were just sitting there looking defeated and then we got right back into it. And then, uh, 
Oh yes, the total number of hours worked as well. I needed to keep track of how long people worked on things, how long I planned on, uh, how long I spent on planning, uh, how long that I also, um, how long it took me to buy the materials, how to plan things, how long the project took overall, and I needed to keep track of everybody's progress. Everybody that took part in the project, I needed to keep track of how long. So I think it was like a total of 87 hours that was put into the project. Uh, let me scroll, or not scroll. So um, at the beginning, when we were purchasing the materials, it was, we, um, there was $597 that was spent, but because we had a discount and then we returned materials, but then we had to do those bonus planks, then it turned into $530. So, um, let me look back. You know, you guys donated $16. That's fine. It means a lot that you guys donated anyway. Um, honestly, just by you guys being here, it gets me, uh, can get me ad revenue as well. So, you know, I'm going to get paid by this eventually as well i just got paid from youtube about over a hundred dollars so hopefully within the next month i can get paid again and then you know i might um i might try to stream shortly soon so i can uh i don't know try to get more people to get to donate money to me i mean 530 is a lot to ask for but if i get like 100 dollars in donations eventually that'd be pretty cool too but the $16 you guys gave me, much obliged. Thank you very much. I'm not done with the live stream. I'm just done with my project portion of it. Um, I think I might just give tips, actually. Let me think about this, actually. Because if the point of my live stream was to talk about my project, I could do another live stream next week talking about my, my personal tips to... Uh, doing a project, getting the proposal done, and the entire, or at least my, my, um, what's it called? My viewpoint on the process to getting Eagle Scout. Because like I said before, the project is only a, a, like one portion to get the rank. So maybe I can do a separate live stream talking about my entire progress to Eagle Scout, not just the project. Because, like I said before, you needed leadership position, you needed activity, you needed merit badges, the application, you also need references, and the project. So actually, I think I'll just answer your guys' questions, and then I'll just end the stream here. And maybe I'll stream next week again, talking about the entirety of the Eagle Scout rank as a whole for me. So, yeah, there's the project. I got it all done. That's me talking about it. I'm not ending the stream yet, but I, I still do want to say thank you for watching. If you are still here, it really means a lot. I really didn't think I was going to get this many people watching. And the donations, thank you. Oh my gosh. You know, $16 is not much compared to the 500 I need, but it's a lot to me because anything helps. So thank you very much for the donations. If you have a question... Uh, put it in the chat. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna keep the stream on for about ten minutes. If you guys want to ask anything, if you guys are like my friends and you know me personally, you can even ask weird questions too. Um, I'll try to answer them. Just don't make them too weird. But yeah, if you can, try to keep the question scout related. All right. Um. Also, I need to drink water again. Yeah. What? Yeah. So if you have questions, put them in the chat. <clears throat> MK Pro Elite, thank you. Malagu Forever asks, what will you do now that your Eagle project is done? So, like I said, I just, um, I just turned in my report for the project, and I'm getting all those signatures, so the people, I, I forgot who exactly needs to approve it, but I'm, I sent it off already, so they are, it is getting approved, and after my project, I need to finish my references i contacted some adults that i know that can reference me um i have i have um a religious leader i have an old teacher at my school that i know and uh, a current teacher that i have now and then my best friend's mom and uh i forgot who the other one was crap i can't think of it off the top of my head um 
Uh, oh yeah, so yeah, the references. Then I need to uh, submit the rank application, which I just got that submitted as well. So that is getting all the signatures done too. So I got my report. I just, like literally three days ago, I think, I just sent off my rank application, which isn't for the project. That's for the actual rank itself. So if that, if that gets approved, then I can get Eagle Scout within the next month. So that'd be very, very nice. So yeah, uh, I also need to write like an essay sort of thing. That's part of the application as well. So I need to write the essay. So get my references, finish my application, write my essay. That's what I need. To, that's what I, bleh, bleh, I can't speak. That's what else I need to do. Oh yeah, I also just got elected into this thing called Order the Arrow. So that ordeal was coming up in, uh, next month, I think. Um, scroll. Your creep, your creepy uncle asks, "What do you think of Iro?" Dude, Iro is so wholesome. He's the uncle to everybody. Iro's Iro's very cool. Maria Guzman asks, "How many merit badges will you finish?" Actually, after you get Eagle Scout, there are these things called Eagle Palms. Every five merit badges, I think, that you because you need twenty one for Eagle Scout. Every five more you get after that, you get an Eagle Palm. And there's three different levels. There's a, um, a bronze one, a gold one, and a silver one. And I wanted all three of them. So if each of them takes five more merit badges to get, that means five times three is 15. Add that to the original 21. That means I needed 36 in general. So I just got my 36th merit badge. That means when I get Eagle Scout, I'm also automatically getting all three Eagle Palms. So that's cool. So yeah, I have 36 merit badges. Um, Bookworm for life. Mac, what was your favorite part of the project? It was around the middle of it when everything started coming together. Like, we figured out how to get everything done. We ha Even though I had the prototype for the bench, there were still a lot of things we needed to figure out. So it was at the midway point where everything was running smoothly. It was like that video clip I showed you guys where like I was panning to all the different stations. Like everything was just going really smooth. It was so smooth. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was just really nice to see everything come together. Like I led that and it just, it still worked out in the end, even though a lot of, like literally everything went wrong, but it was, it still worked out. MK Pro Elite says, are you doing the OA? Yeah, I, um, the, about three weeks ago, we had OA elections. There was around 30 people at the in the troop at that time, and around 10 people that were up for eligibility. And I was the only one in the troop that got elected, which is really weird, because I, I really thought that me and my friends were going to get elected into OA, but for some reason, I was the only one. I guess... I don't know. I think what I... Yeah. Oh, okay. What I assume is that, oh cool, what I assume is that when they were voting on who to choose for OA, I don't think the scouts realized that you can vote for multiple people, so I think some of them just voted for me, even though they said multiple times you can vote for everybody. But yeah, I just got elected into it, and I don't know when the ordeal is, but I'll, I'll get told soon. Robin asks, define too weird. You guys can ask anything, just make sure that it's something I can actually say on a live stream that I can answer. <laughs> Poe the Squash says, I have a question, Mac, only 36. Poe the Squash is my brother. He's uh, three years younger than me, two years younger, yeah, he's three years younger than me. I, can't, I don't even know his own age. And he got one more merit badge than me, so he keeps holding that over my head. Um, Kinetic Toast asks, what merit badges will you do at winter camp? Oh yeah, I'm going to winter camp at Camp Lenoche. Um, I'm going right after Christmas on the 27th. And, uh, I'm going to be doing rifle shooting, kayaking, uh, po pottery, and sculpture. So that's what I'm going to be doing. MK Pro Elite, you are correct. To be elected as a candidate in the EOA, you must have a 51% vote in the troop. The only thing that I'm confused about is that there were a lot of people who should have gotten into OA. Like, they should have gotten the 51, because 
you could very well vote for everybody. Like, I voted for everybody but one person. Like, I was really, I was really thinking that a couple of my friends were going to get into it with me. So what I'm thinking is the scouts got confused and thought they could only vote for me if they wanted me to be it. So that's what I assume happened. Um, Pull the Squash said, Knowing the weather and how long it took, what would you do different if you redid the project? Definitely actually spend time planning very specific details, getting plans to be, like, even though plans do fall apart sometimes, making sure I actually coordinate properly on what's going to happen. Because... I was not expecting it to rain. Like, I honestly thought it was not going to rain. So when it did rain, I just didn't know what to do. We were, we were rushing the electrical tools underneath the umbrella. So, yeah, I would just... Like, w with any project in general, make sure you know what you're doing. If things go wrong, make sure you deal with it well. And uh, also, I, again, like I always say, c consistent communication. Like, that's very, very important. Alright, uh, cool badges. <laughs> Blue Warlord says maybe they all voted for Biden. <laughs> MK Pro Elite says, from my experience in elections, most will get as close as 49. Yeah, uh, last year, when they did OA elections, there was one person that was off by one vote, and they recounted them multiple times, and he was still only off by one vote. Kind of sad. Alright, so... Th that's done for my portion of the live stream. So I think what I am going to do is next week or the week after, I'm going to do a similar live stream, but instead of talking about my project, I'm going to talk about my progress for Eagle Scout in general, like what I had to do and how it's going for me so far. So I think I'll do that next f in the next few weeks. So any other questions you guys have, like anything, put them in there so I can answer. And thank you for watching the stream. Malagu Forever says, what does it mean to you to be almost an Eagle Scout? Um, two things. One, very relieving. Oh my gosh, I've spent so much time and effort into getting merit badges and ranks and stuff and coordinating all these different events and campouts. It's so relieving to finally be at my end goal. And also, like, I didn't know how to feel right after I got the project done. After I took that picture that's on the screen right now, and I was I was telling the um, I was telling the uh, I can't speak, I was telling everybody they could go home, and uh, my family was getting into the van. I was loading everything into the back of the van, and I kind of just stood there for a few seconds thinking, and I honestly didn't know how to feel. Like it was just I I got it done, and I was sitting there like, wow, and then it, it didn't hit me until later when I was like. I got it done. <laughs> so like like right after I finished, I was like, "Hmm. I guess that's cool." And then like 30 minutes later, I'm sitting down at the table eating McDonald's and I'm like, "Yo, I did it." <laughs> so, yeah, it it means a lot that I'm almost done. I'm definitely going to be able to get it before I turn 18 and I'm very happy about that. I'm just kind of hoping I'm able to get it before I go to winter camp cuz I don't want to sound narcissistic, but I kind of want to show off my Eagle Scout at Winter Camp. Especially if people notice me there, they'll be like, Oh, you made Eagle Scout. I'd be like, heh heh, yes. <laughs> Kaishan Hill says, Woo, Mac, you got this. Thank you, thank you. Uh, MK Pro Elite says, Good luck, Mac. It is quite a feeling when that certificate arrives. Congratulations. Yes, I'm so, so hyped. Maria Guzman asks, Who's your favorite sister? I both don't like you equally. I love you guys. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. It's been over an hour? I didn't even realize. That's cool. This has been a very successful stream. I got over 20 people to watch. Over 123 playbacks. Uh, I got $16. Thank you. Again, for those of you who donated, thank you very much. Anything helps to get me closer to my goal. So thank you so much. Poe the Squash, my brother, asks, who's your favorite brother? Hmm. That's a tough one. I might have to get back to you on that. Okay. Well. Oh, actually, yeah. For those of you who are still on, if you want to contact me on Discord, I use Discord every day. 
Most of you are actually here from Discord, but if you aren't, you should definitely add me. Oh, that's the wrong number. Hold up. I just realized that's wrong. Never mind. Uh, uh, but, but, there we go. Yes. That's the right one. So, a lot of you guys are here from Discord, so thank you very much. You guys are amazing. You mean so much to me. Um, if you don't have me on Discord, you should definitely add me because I'm on there every day and we can just, like, chill. So, yeah. Uh, JR Animation Studios says he's got money. That's awesome. Yeah, I got donated $16 by MK Pro, Andy, a couple other people I can't remember the names of right now. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know how to check either. Uh, what's the super chat? Anyway, yeah. So, if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to end the stream. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if, for those of you that like are new here, I post every Saturday at 12 o'clock noon, except I might be doing another live stream, so uh, again, for fundraiser purposes, and also because I want to, um, also because I can't speak, I want to discuss my Eagle Scout progress, because this was my Eagle Scout project progress, so I think my next live stream, I'll discuss my Eagle Scout rank progress. Oh, yes, here we go. Sean Bryant, Bryan, I can't speak. Sean Bryant donated $5. AJ Tans donated $10. And MK Pro Elite donated $2. So thank you very much for the donations. It means a lot. Uh, is there any other questions before I end? Yeah, and also the, the fact that you guys are here gets me ad revenue as well. So... This probably gets me a few more extra bucks as well. All right. In two minutes, I will be ending the live stream. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. It really means a lot. Also, all my friends that came from Discord, thank you. It really means a lot. I, did, I didn't actually think people were going to join, so this makes me really happy. Thank you. Um, I will end the stream in two minutes. And yeah, that's how my project went. I hope you enjoyed learning about how the project works and like my progress on it thank you for all your kind words as well i wasn't able to say every single comment that you guys were saying but it i read everything so yeah it means a lot that all your kind words that you guys liked this and that you guys are impressed <laughs> i was impressed with myself honestly i'm just surprised i was able to pull it off so very successful stream Thank you guys for watching. I'll be back next Saturday with either a video or a live stream, whichever I feel like doing. Uh, yeah. So have a great rest of your day, my dudes. If you haven't already, like the stream. Turn on notifications on my channel so you know when I do another live stream. And for those of you guys who came from Discord, I'll see you guys shortly because I'm on there every day. For those of you guys on YouTube, I will see you guys next week. So, yeah. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching the stream, and I will see you all in the next one. Now, let me do my fancy thing, because I think I figured out how to do this. So let me switch to the end here. Go boop, and then go boop. Look at that. Oh, look. Oh, yeah. All right, bye. Bye guys. Hi Drew Humphreys. Hi. Hi. <laughs> but bye guys. Have a good day. See you guys later.